This is Jeremiah. We're back for, for my last quick segment here on, you know, we're in John 18 and so forth, 17 rather. And I decided to shut down for the day. I, I like to get about five, seven chapters in a, a day. Uh, that's okay. We'll, we'll try and get about five in tomorrow um, as we move on. And of course, I'm hitting a lot of chapters that you're hitting home runs pertaining to living bread, to pertaining to agape love, pertaining to sound doctrine, from which everything basically comes from. But the main subject in sound doctrine, of course, is living bread, and we tie it to other subjects. The trifecta is to love the Lord with everything. And this is how you love the Lord with everything. It's for you to eat living bread which came down from heaven, which is basically centered on uh, humiliation and not seeking deliverance, uh, just as the Master told Peter, we just looked at. Should I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? I'm not fighting this cup. I'm not fighting dying for you. I'm going to go along and have a successful purchase, Peter, of your sins, uh, and so you can live. You want to fight right now. We're not, here, we're, we're not here to fight right now. We're here to lay down our life and our lives and to give life. That's how you that's how you birth life. The master said a seed must fall into the ground before it can give birth. Otherwise, it abides alone. What we're talking about has a lot to do with grace and mercy, living bread, because grace and mercy are how this is all done. You have an opportunity to love God, and he's going to empower you. When he sees you're serious, he's going to give you the energy, to energize you. Wisdom is required because you have to make proper decisions. The, the master just exercised wisdom by telling Peter to put the sword away. If we try to resist this and stop this, humans, all humans go downstairs. And the Lord is wise. He wants people to go upstairs. He knows if he doesn't do this, everybody goes downstairs. So he makes a wise decision for you. That's the point. And you're wise by accepting the same cross that he did. Take it up daily, and you're now a winner too, and you'll be resurrected. Because you're now all one. Hebrews chapter 1. Let's go to, uh, I said chapter 1. Let's go to chapter 2. I made a mistake. Let's go to verse 9. Um, let's go to verse 9. If we talk about grace again, we talked about grace here which is concept number four in this ministry. Getting good things that you don't deserve. So an opportunity to love Jesus Christ is an opportunity that you don't deserve. And that's what Paul's going to say here in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus Christ who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. That, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So by the grace of God, he should. Stop right there. Grace basically means a good opportunity. Jump on it. Be wise. If you're a caring person. If you're a caring person, you have an opportunity to die for other people. You, you might do that. Now, the Lord God did that in Jesus Christ. He had an opportunity by grace, which is an opportunity to do good things. Uh, he tasted death for every man. So he did it. He took advantage of the opportunity. 
meaning a good opportunity for other people. That's the point. Same thing applies to you and I. You have been graced with an opportunity. It's an excellent opportunity to enter into death for other people. That's the whole point. It's very simple. Now, he did it for every man. You're doing it for yourself, essentially. But you're also doing it for others because you're bringing people into heaven. So you're just like him. You're dying for other people to go to heaven, and you're also dying for yourself to go to heaven. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things. Going back to John, he, by, by him all things were and are created. They were created by him. And by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. So now we're getting into son's talk. We, we were talking sh uh, servant talk. Now we're referred to as children. Huh. The Bible goes back and forth calling you a child and a servant because you're both of them. However, what's the big one here? Uh, it ain't son, it's servant. Servant is the big one. We're not trying to minimalize you being a son of God. It's just that humility forces you to think of yourself as a servant, just like the angel did. The angel could have said, I am your fellow son of God to John, but he chose fellow servant. See? In other words, you are a son, but you don't want to get too much into talking about being a son. You want to remain humble, which means you're going to focus on you being a servant. That's the point. See? Let this mind be in you. I'm a servant. Okay. It doesn't mean you're a child. It means you've allowed this mind to be in you, that you know that you're basically a servant, and let's shut the door on that. that and he's master. That's, that's the key. Okay? I'm not diminishing the fact that you're adopted or, or your father loves you and you call him father. Uh, you know, I love you, Father, conversation. We do that here all the time. I'm just telling you that we're talking about servanthood right now. We're talking about living bread right now, which is establishing a servant mind. That's why the Master said, learn to be a servant. He meant it. He didn't say, learn to be a servant child, servant privileged TV guy. He said, learn to be a servant. He didn't, he didn't say child. And the reason why is if you learn to be a servant, you'll know you're a child. If you don't learn to be a servant, you'll never know the feeling of being a child. Got it? In bringing many sons unto glory and to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. So you are perfected uh, through sufferings. The same old story again. Jeremiah, way back to living bread again in the Bible. You never really left it. That's this perfecting again and perfection and molding and shaping and chastening and spanking and get the dross out, get the sin out. Okay, it's a process, obviously, here, and, and a lot of it has to do with suffering. There you go. Tribulation, shaking, fellowship of sufferings. John, we, we, we just read John in jail. He's obviously suffering. He's, he's a pretty tough guy. Even though he hung around a lot of women, this guy's pretty tough. He's not doing any complaining at all. He just says, I'm a brother in tribulation, meaning if you're paying attention, he's telling you that the jail stinks. That's what he's saying. John is saying, this jail is horrible, and but I'm not going to really tell you. That's what he's doing. He's saying he's being shaken up, but he's not making it personal. He says, I'm joining you in your shaking up. Meaning, I'm shaking right now, kind of. He's getting revelation in the middle of the night to write down these seven, uh, those chapters, 22 chapters of the book of Revelation. He's writing them down for the churches. And, and we got them, thank God. We, we have those 22 chapters. But the point is, is that he is shaking a little. He's, uh, he's a tough guy, though. This guy's pretty tough. John ain't no wimp here. He's... 
for he that both sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. Stop right there. There's your bottom line. That's Hebrews chapter 2, verse 11. Bottom line, bottom line, living bread, the heartbeat of the living bread which came down from heaven, that if any man eat this bread, he'll never see death. Okay, and, and, we're, and we're talking about sound doctrine here, uh, of, of a lot of subject matter, or different subjects, but this is probably the main subject we're focusing on right now, which is living bread, which is denial, humiliation, and not seeking deliverance. And, and doing the same thing that Jesus told John, I'm not going to get away from this cup. I'm not going to run away from this cup. I'm going to take this cup and drink it. No complaining. No, I, I got to get out of here. I'm going to save souls in drinking this cup and leave me alone. I don't want any wimps around me. I don't want no pansies around me. We're, we're going to face this problem uh, of, of, of persecution from human beings, liars, cheats, and thieves, and we're going to stay right here. We're going to stand. I'm going through this boot camp, and I'm not quitting. Okay? I, I want to quit. I'm going AWOL. And now you're all one. That's the point. The one who separated himself for suffering, and you who are also separated for suffering. That's what the word sanctified means here. Separated for suffering, but it also means you're separated for glory. You suffer with him, you reign with him. Jeremiah, does the Bible ever get away from this? Unless you watch TV or something, maybe. I don't know. We're Quakers here. We read the Bible. I, I read the Bible. I, I don't play games around here. We... I don't, I don't know how to lie too much. You know, I, I'm not perfect, but I don't know how to practice lies and have meetings where, where we, we, we try to maximize investments and take old women's, you know, uh, uh, inheritances or something and all that kind of stuff going on out there in the world. I don't want to know anything about all that. We just read David where he said, I don't, I don't want any of that. I'm just like David, and, and, I, and I hope you are too. I don't want any of that trashy behavior around me. I don't want to be trash. I'm fine just here poor waiting on the Lord. There you go. John just said the, the kingdom of patience. There you go. We, we, we have to practice patience around here. In your patience, do you possess your soul? I want, do you want to possess your soul? Yes or no? I hope you want to own it. Our master said in, in Revelation, the book we're in right now, he said, he said, no, we're in Hebrews right now, but he said, don't let anyone take your crown away from you. Translated, hold on to salvation. Stay on the narrow brick road. Let's continue with 11 as I'm shutting down early. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. That's what John just said, right? I am now your brother in tribulation. And what's the previous verse? Through suffering, he is validated. That's the point. Now, by the grace of God, you can offer yourself as being sanctified uh, in suffering and drink the cup that Jesus told John's mother, which I like to reference quite a bit here because it wraps everything up. Because the cup has a lot of different problems. It's not just one drink. There's one drink, and another drink, and another drink, and the cup is nasty. It's quite obvious. It's very simple, okay? Then, then, then the master he goes into, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will surely, or I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church, will I sing unto thee. Psalm 22, 22. So we have a reference to the fact that we're all brothers, not because we just love each other, but we've all laid down our lives for other people, and we weren't ashamed to do it, and we did it, and we stood up like men. And we stood up like John's mother who said, I can do this. I can drink this cup. You, you, you have some sufferings to do, Master? Okay, bring them on. If you can stand up, if you can take it, I can take it. 
That's the attitude that you're supposed to have here. That we're all one now, and he's not ashamed to call you brethren. If, if, if you're a TV preacher type person, and, and all you want to do is eat ice cream and be greedy, you know, and, and, and steal money from widows and, you know, and play games and, and not give people eternal life scriptures like I'm giving you right now, which is living bread, and read, and read Esther stories and go, me and my wife went to the mall last night. We had a great time. Everybody go home. God loves everybody. That's all we got to say today. I'll say the same thing next week. Let's all go to Disneyland. It's a circus act. It's not doing the things that are required of you, that you can be one with the master there. What's the word? They are all of one. What does they are all of one mean? What does that mean? They are all of one. Do you know? It means they're all of the same experience. Then it says he's not ashamed to call you brethren, which gets down to the nitty-gritty, doesn't it? He's not ashamed to call you a brother because you faced manhood as a Christian. That's all this is over and over again. I keep telling you that. Some of you think I'm, a little, I'm going overboard. I don't think I'm going overboard at all. It's just the same kind of story in your Bible over and over again. You know, now, now it's he's not ashamed to call you brethren, saying, I will declare your name Unto my brethren. And that, by the way, goes to beauty. Uh, seven point something here in my digital Bible study here. That's seven. Oh, that's seven. Eleven. No, that's seven. Um, ten. Seven point ten in this ministry is God's going to call on your name in heaven. And then he does the same thing reference here in uh, uh, Hebrews 2, 11. You say, Jeremiah, you, you really hammer home living bread. What should you hammer home? Kindergarten Sunday school stuff? You're too old for that, uh, many of you out there. Now, a lot of stuff we're teaching here recently is basically for adults. I don't mind teenagers or children watching my Bible studies. They can watch them. But a lot of stuff we're talking about here recently is for adults. Boots on the ground adults. You're not accountable for this uh, uh, um, uh, um, fellowship of the sufferings perfected through sufferings to ten as a child. No, that's not. That's not for you. You, you young, you youngins out there who watch my videos. This is for you adults. To it's time to man up or get out of town. That's because it's time to say I'm going to go ahead and allow difficult circumstances for the benefit of. The, uh, of touching the people who Jesus loves. It's the same thing over and over again. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. So, you know, he, God's not going to declare you unless you've been in a war, you know. Unless, you've been, unless you're a veteran, uh, you know, of a war, why are you in the parade? There, there's no honor parade for you. That's why a lot of these TV guys, bozos, and some people I've met in my life, you know, as, as a Christian, I, I could see that they were bozos and, you know, and, and, and they were, they, they, were, they wanted the church only because they could get ice cream, candy, you know, and, and some sort of name. And they could, oh, they could have power. Ooh, that's another one. I have power to throw a devil across the street. I have power to kick your booty, you know. I have power to change the storms, you know. I'm going to make, I'm going to make the moon into green cheese, you know. And, and there are a lot of people like that. When it's quite clear for, for a third grader who passed the class and got an A in the class especially, that we're here to use that power for the purposes of saving souls and, and planting souls and watering them. Okay, that's what this power is for. Because what, what does God want to do? He wants to help people. He can't do it with lazy, sloppy, uh, uh, sports-minded, selfish mirror people who stare in the mirror all day. They, they, they're not going to help anybody. They're not going to take time out of their basketball schedule, you know, the worshiping a basketball that goes through a little round hole or something, or Billy jump 10 feet in the air, you know, woo, you know, like circus animals. I'm not putting down sports. I spent, I spent a lot of my youth watching sports. I'm just saying that there comes a time when you need to buckle down here so that he's not going to be ashamed to call your name out. 
because you got love active. You, 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 you put yourself on love duty in the church somewhere. You said, Lord, where do you want me to go? I woke up this morning, and what is your bidding? Every day, Master, if it's difficult, I'm still going to go do it. Just like you did. So now we're all one here, okay? Now, I'm not ashamed to call your name out. You're a veteran, okay? That's the whole point here. This police officer who came over the house the other day, he, he was he was on duty. He was he, he gave me some information about some, uh, it was some family matter of some sort that was uh, some paperwork. He didn't come over here for a crime, but he came over here, he stood up, he told me, and, and he, he hopped right back in his car. That's the kind of attitude that we're talking about here. Somebody might want to shoot that guy. That guy, that, you know what? That guy would lay his life down for my car stereo. I'll say it again. A lot of these police officers, they're not all good. I've been a lot of bad police. But most of them, I used to work with the police department here um, about 10 years. How many years ago was that? That was about, uh, no, it was about seven. Seven years ago, I worked with the Los Angeles Police Department and the University of Southern California, the police department. And, and I only ran into one or two knuckleheads. The rest of the guys were very nice, intelligent, caring, you know, most of them were graveyard. Most of the police I talked to, they worked graveyard shift. Because my shift was six to six or something like that. I watched property, that was my job, security. But I worked with the, with the with the University of Southern California Police Department, they have their own police department, which is obviously tied into the Los Angeles Police Department, and I worked with both of those organizations on my job. And what's interesting about, when you think about it, some of these police officers, they will, they will lay down their life to save your car stereo. That gentleman who came over here, he, he puts his life down the line to say, I, I don't know if I would try to save some, uh, let my, uh, let my die for a car stereo. You know what I mean? These guys do it every night. Now, there, there are bad police. I, mean, I ran into one one night, and that, that guy was, he was, he was really a, 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 a knucklehead. And they used to say the white police were the bad police. That, that's nonsense. The, 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 the two worst police I ever ran into were Soul Brothers. Two of the three worst police I ever ran into, they were Soul Brothers. One, one of them gave me a hard time one night. You know, I was on duty. He goes, oh, you don't have enough information or something. And then the police came over, and they recognized me, and they took off. Police are a little bit smarter than some of these USC guys. Are, uh, as a matter of fact, I never ran into one. Now, I know that they had a couple of bad L.A. police officers, but um, um, I never ran into one of them. And I, I rubbed elbows with quite a few of those guys. They went to 7-Eleven for coffee. And they were right across from USC there. That's that's where they got their coffee. A lot of these the officers there. I was sad to hear that one of those guys was was murdered uh, one one day one day there. But um, and I I don't know exactly which one it was. I, I don't think I knew that that gentleman. Um, but uh, but uh, that's really what this is. This is soldierhood. That's why a good name for a church is the Salvation Army. I wouldn't call my church the Salvation Army, but it makes sense on many levels. Paul told Timothy to fight a good fight. The, the war between the world, the flesh, and the devil, and, and, and your job, it, it, it can get pretty thick. You can lose a few battles. The, the, bottom, the bottom line is you don't want to lose the war. I'm done for the day. That's enough. For he that both sanctifieth and he and they who are sanctified are all of one. You're of one experience. The same one Jesus asked John's mother, can you drink? You want to go to heaven with your boys? 
Okay, you want a guaranteed spot, huh? Hmm. Okay, let me tell you what you got to do. What you got to do is, is to make sure that you're going to start this race and you're going to face challenges and you're going to toughen up and you're going to say no to a lot of pleasures in the world. And, and can you do all of this? And they said, we can do it. And I say the same thing they did, along with John's mother. I can do it too. So can you. You can be an overcomer, a winner here. A champion, a Nike, a champion. You can beat the devil. You can win this war, and we're here to push you in that direction. I'm going to help you as much as I can. That's my job, right? Hebrews chapter 2 is pretty tough stuff. It's like war talk. I am not ashamed to call them brethren. Translated, if you weren't in the war, you ain't being recognized. That's <laughs> sad. Judge, if you can't figure that one out. Hey, by the way, Christianity is not just one giant war. There, there may be a lot of years in your life where you're eating ice cream or going to the mall, just like some of these TV preachers. But the bottom line is, is that we teach and preach what I'm telling you right now. Which is you should wake up every morning with that cross on and teach it and preach it. Because if you're ashamed of this kind of conversation, when the Lord's Day comes, he says he may be ashamed of you. Get the point? Which goes back to the word shame here in 11 to, uh, um, Hebrews 11.2. The word ashamed. See? So all my listeners out there, I don't want you to be ashamed, offended, and whining and complaining like they did in the wilderness. You wake up every morning and say, bring it on. I have lots of relatives and people I know. Well, I don't see lots of relatives, but I think some of my relatives, we won't mention that, but a lot of people I know, I can kind of tell that they're ashamed to, to, to associate themselves with a daily cross and to declare his word. They're ashamed of it. And that's bad news because whoever is ashamed of me and my word, ashamed of him, I'll be when my glory comes. Can you get, can you get two and two is four here? This is not um, advanced algebra here. This is not calculus. This is... Two and two is four. It's very simple. Hey, okay, you got it? I'm done. You don't have to know the order of operations in math. You don't have to, you don't, you don't have to rationalize the denominator. There's no heavy scientific notation here in negative integers. This is all simple, dimple stuff here, basically, for, for the most part. And what, what it got a little complicated today, but it's basically uh, there's not that much here. Okay? Look, look at verse 9. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. There you go. You want to, you want to get crowned with glory and honor? Uh, I, I would say that's what you should be focusing on. Okay. You want to be crowned with glory and honor. Okay. That's, that's the goal here, which is to allow suffering of the death of you. Essentially. Your pleasures, your desires, the master said you must trade in the whole field to buy the pearl. You, you can't afford salvation unless you trade in the whole field. You're going to have to be open to the whole field. That's how valuable this pearl is, which, which is glory and honor right here in verse 9, which means you're standing by Jesus Christ. And it was all by the grace of God that you, you that you were allowed to go through the suffering of death, just like the master, and now you're going to be crowned with glory and honor. And, he, he, and then Paul tells you it was by the grace of God that you could taste death. So when you say amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me, you can say amazing grace, how sweet the sound that let me suffer for the purposes of, of helping people in general uh, get saved. You got that? You want glory and honor? You, you want heaven and light and beauty and 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 a, and a and a beautiful tree to have fruit from? You want the river? Then you stick to this this uh, narrow brick road that, we're, that I'm, I'm I'm outlining for you here, okay?
And we just mentioned one of the most important scriptures in the Bible, which was, I'm going to shut down. Uh, whoever is ashamed of me and my words, how many people are you going to walk around here, and, uh, go to the mall, whatever, to the gym, and, and they're going to tell you I'm ashamed of what you're talking about? Uh, are you telling me that, that I need to have some sort of burial? I need to, to, to have a fellowship of the sufferings of Jesus Christ, be open to it, preach it, and, and, and that's how I'm going to get uh, a guaranteed home path to glory? Yes. But I'm ashamed of it. I'm greedy. I'm selfish. Then you ain't getting in. The young rich ruler walked away sorrowful because he had many riches. He just couldn't give up his riches. We're here to give up everything in the field. Everything. Because the pearl of eternal life and glory has a big price tag. And the price tag is basically your life. It can fluctuate how much of your life. That's not my business. The business is for us to establish that mindset. When, where, how much, you know, the cross and suffering, that's not my business. Okay? That's what Jesus told Peter, because Jesus told Peter that John is going to have a relatively kickback life for a long time. He's going to take care of my mother, and he's not going to have a lot of sufferings that most of you guys are going to have, but he will have a cross. And Peter was like, wait a minute, dude, if I can, I don't want to paraphrase him, but he basically said that, what about me? How come I can't have a long life and whatever? And the master said, master told him, you follow me. Basically, in my interpretation is my interpretation is mind your own business and do what I told you to do. How many times I told you that's basically what, what Christianity is? Yes. Do what I told you to do and be quiet over there. I'm master and you ain't. I'm done. Maranatha. Shalom. Hallelujah. Amen.